In this webinar, we will consider the changes uh, that we're seeing in the software market and, uh, and the technology landscape overall, and that this is creating challenges for ISVs and, and for enter enterprise software, but also that it's creating opportunities to deliver new value in, in perhaps uh, surprising ways. Uh, but bef before we get going, um, maybe real quick, just to introduce ourselves. My name is Sean Devlin, uh, and, and current Servoy customers may recognize me because I run a lot of um, these webinars for, for a more uh, technical audience uh, for the community. Um, but today I'm, I'm pleased because I'm joined by our CEO, Ron Vandenberg. Ron, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good to be here to finally talk to our, uh, our tech crowd also a little bit, but um, good that, to be here to talk a little bit more about the business end of, of these uh, technical solutions. So great to be here. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to have you because, um, yeah, it takes the uh, pressure off me a bit, a little, <laughs> a little bit more fun for me. Yeah, good, good. Okay. Um, well, maybe uh, real quick, let's look at the, the agenda, um, not only for today, but for this uh, three-part webinar mini-series. And we chose this topic because um, we've been seeing this becoming a more dominant factor in integrations, uh, becoming a factor for organizations that we work with. And uh, we're happy to have some exciting announcements uh, for new offerings from Servoy that, that we're, we want to uh, address it. Now, um, in the other technical webinars, uh, I typically go right to a demo first. That's my rule. Uh, and so today it's, uh, it's really hard for me not to do a, a demo uh, uh, as, a, as a first order of business in these webinars. But I think it, it's important that we kind of set the stage and make the business case first, because I believe this topic is as much strategic as it is you know, technology focused. So over the next two weeks, we will um, do that uh, deeper look. We'll meet some guest speakers and, you know, investigate the technical side uh, of this topic. So there will be there will be time for that. But today we'll we'll go pretty quick and just kind of, um, you know, um, make the business case and uh, talk about the why before we get into the what. At Servoy, we, we uh, work with a lot of ISVs and, uh, and enterprise uh, application developers. For us, it's, it's kind of clear to see that the landscape is definitely changing. And uh, Ron, um, when we're talking about integrations, I'm curious, um, what do you see changing from a business perspective? Well, <clears throat> to maybe start a little bit more high level, um, I think what we're seeing, and I presume that our audience is also seeing that, is that I think the competition is pretty fierce. Um, everybody's uh, mm -hmm. trying to get all those customers and become the next best thing. And there's many new things coming along and um, it's really competitive. Um, maybe the most competitive thing today is that there's all these point solutions that only focus on one thing and try to be the best in class there and win mm -hmm. their customers on UX. It's, it's a pretty competitive landscape. Um, it's hard to to distinguish yourselves when there is a point solution which focuses on only one small thing of what you do. I think a good example is Salesforce that took away a lot of business away from, from SAP, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's many other like that, like Pipedrive, Workday, Jira, I can, the list is endless. And I think the, it's a pretty, a pretty competitive landscape. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, th I think that that's a big, puts a big pressure on, on the market. I think another thing <clears throat> is that uh, what I see happening is, and I'm not really sure where that, that this comes from, but end customers uh, and also corporates, they, they now go for a best of breed landscape. They right. go, they, they want to choose those solutions that fit well for their purpose and uh, rather maybe even use half of an ERP package and, yeah. and and other half of something else because those halves fit perfectly, right? Yeah. And I think many years ago it was fine to to say, yeah, I'm going to tailor my organization to, to to the software. I think today that's not done anymore at all. Um, and like I said, it, it, it's driven from various things, but maybe even driven from those point solutions, which are so easy to engage with. Right. It, it's like a click, try, buy, and then suddenly you have Salesforce, right? 
um, yeah. and um, so that's that's um, the marketplace is really changing or it has changed actually I think um, with that comes that if you're a more a traditional ISV or have been around for a while that keeping differentiated is is very uh, very difficult yeah um, you know, I, I see Ron I see this um, with with the customers uh, servoy customers that I work with that are modernizing um, their offerings of, of their legacy core systems and and they have different needs from existing customers that they have versus new sales that they're trying to generate mm -hmm. uh, and and they're forced to make these strategic choices about um, in their modernization effort about uh, which components or modules do they do they bring along to mm -hmm. you know to the newer version and which components do they maybe uh, leave and, and offer integrations instead that it's, right. it's, it's a strategic challenge it's not just a technical one well it, I think everybody everybody knows is to stay different differentiated you need to innovate right but mm -hmm. then the next question is yeah now, now we are in the innovative what 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 direction are we going to go in right and maybe I think typical IVs are pretty vertically organized or uh, uh, oriented but going more vertical will typically also limit your market right mm -hmm. and and because not one size fits all. Yeah. Um, so I think so. What you see also having is they they almost serve as like a palette of verticalized prone solutions. And of course, that that together is one package. But but they are operating op opening up um, uh, to to yeah, deliver the value to their customers that they need. And right. uh, with that also comes that they are more and more partnering. I think um, it's it's a it's a thing, thing that's happening today. Well. Um, maybe can you talk about why you think uh, this this kind of uh, change is happening and what's driving it and and you know what are the kind of ingredients for it? <laughs> well, I think a big driver is of course uh, cloud, um, and I think the biggest reasons for people moving or wanting stuff from the cloud is I think I think the big thing there is ease of use. Um, it's easy to use something in a browser. It's easy to buy something. It's mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. And of course, there's a lot of boring things there, like cost and security and availability and scalability. And but I think that's all boring. I think it's all about ease of use, right? And yeah. fit for purpose. And uh, like I said before, it's so easy to buy a point solution um, that and that's a really really driving things. Um, right. So yeah. Um, I think it also brings you a challenge, maybe for cloud and on-prem. Um, it it also puts pressure on the typically monolithic approach of many ISVs. Um, like I said before, you they they moving to, towards a, a, a palette of things rather than one thing, one big thing, and uh, that's driven by cloud and that's driven by point solutions and by click try by and um, parts being on-prem and parts being in the cloud. Um, yeah, and it, I think the big picture is that things become more and more scattered. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you can you talk about? Um, uh, I've I've heard the the word thrown around by analysts before, systems of engagement, and um, how that that plays into this. Well, that's that's a big driver for um, many companies that, in order to distinguish yourselves from your competition, uh, you need. Uh, you need something different than your competition. So uh, today's offering of many companies is not just a bricks and mortar company, but let's say uh, the, the, the software and the digital engagement with your customer is maybe where they see you, right? Maybe maybe you deliver bricks, but they order the bricks through a portal and that portal is really who you are or who you are perceived as being. Mm -hmm. And those are systems of engagement and those are typically not off the shelf. Because right. something off the shelf is the same as your competitor, right? Yeah. Um, and those system of engagements are on the customer end, so typically sales portals, ordering systems. Yeah. Those those should drive things like value and top line growth. But you see a lot of also system of engagement more on back end things like uh, with employees. Nobody wants to show their employees difficult systems which they're not happy with right and yeah. um, having empowered and happy people is really important for companies uh, and same goes for suppliers you see a lot of 
um, supply chain uh, chains uh, being uh, compromised or how do you say that uh, compacted and um, mm -hmm. they, they need to be transparent and operational excellent and uh, so on the supplier end, there's also things like portals and integrations happening um, because that's an added value. It, it saves money, of course, if you don't have to re retype a fax into an ERP, mm -hmm. um, but it, it needs to be on time and transparent and accurate. Um, and, and that's why you see a lot of pressure on ERP systems where they need to you integrate again on the front end with, let's say, system engagement towards customers, with employees. You need things which are really nice to work with. And with suppliers, you need some stuff which is fast and accurate and, um, right. and, and transparent. Yeah, I, I've seen this over the, the, <clears throat> the past uh, few years, especially um, working with Servoice customers who have comprehensive ERP packages. Um, mm -hmm. That, that they were migrating from from legacy core systems and and, and you know modernizing, uh, and and just looking at the way they chose to modernize that, yeah, they knew they had to um, update their core system, you know, their core modules, um, but that's not where they started. Uh, they started with um, a lot of uh, like a suite of mobile, really small mobile applications that kind of mm -hmm. fit together in, in a, a package suite. Mm -hmm. and, and, and gave those first to their customers because it helped. Um, it, it, it added net new value to existing customers because if you're if you're an ISV and you're you're you know modernizing your your overall architecture and it could be a multi-year effort, it it doesn't create really new value. Maybe some nicer UX or yeah, you get to in a browser or something for existing customers. It's not it's not compelling, and so they. They did both at the same time. They 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 began the the work of modernizing their core system, knowing that yeah they needed to um, they needed to also give something to existing customers and and they began with these small uh, systems of engagement that that in, integrate with the, the legacy system and they took that sort of parallel strategy. Right. And and the reason I brought that up is that it's it's a it's a strategic decision. It's not just about technology. It's about you know existing customers and and new sales opportunities. Yeah, and I think that that goes hand in hand with. So I think what they did there, uh, I think their dominant strategy was, yeah, we want to focus first on these things which add value quick, right, mm -hmm. and which in which I can enlighten my customers. Um, but I think that goes hand in with with integration, right? Uh, if you want to see integration at, as a USP almost. Um, that that's more that's like a strategy, right? It's yeah. um, rather than trying to stay uh, stay up, right, and and um, and uh, and uh, cope with it almost. Uh, that that people in the landscape of your customers keep asking for integrations. You could turn that around and mm -hmm. and start selling it as USP because people want this, and they and I think everybody knows that your system is never alone. Um, Big ERPs have 50 to 100 or even more integrations, mm -hmm. and uh, because because <laughs> customers want that, yeah. and I think the old school way to approach it is to say, yeah, I'm trying to be a castle and dig a, a sloth, I think, around it. That's the right word. Uh, a moat, uh, a, mo in a moat yeah. around it. Yeah, yeah. Um, a moat around it, <laughs> trying to open up, right, and and say, here, here I am, and please integrate, and because I know you want to choose. I, I yeah. think that's I think that's the way forward. Yeah. Well, maybe it it uh, it helps for us to take a step back and and to look at um, uh, some real world examples where where this happens. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to start with something that everyone knows. Um, um, I think most people have heard of Slack, and I've seen many of our customers um, adopt Slack. Uh, and the reason I I bring this up is that. Um, uh, a few years ago, uh, Slack really became the dominant chat app. Uh, for a while, people were using all the different kinds of stuff. I remember Yammer and uh, Chatter. Chat, yeah, I don't. It, it, they seem like dinosaurs now, but it wasn't that long ago. And um, and I remember listening to a podcast with the uh, the CEO of Slack was on there, and and he was talking about how this was their single focus was um was to be the i think he wanted to kill email and mm -hmm. to 
to to sort of really replace the way people engage with each other, but then take it to the next level. And so what they did is they not only offered, I think, literally thousands of, of integrations uh, eventually, but even a, a platform where um, developers and, and um, really not, not really hardcore developers, but um, where people could set up um, their own integrations and then even a marketplace where they could share those integrations um, uh, with, with the community. And it, it completely changed the way people thought of what a chat application should be. Uh, and in the process, they, they dominated the market for a few years. I think now that they're starting to uh, um, compete with you know, Microsoft Teams and such. Um, but for a while they were alone in the fact that you could, you could build it at, at um, I, I made a, um, a pilot project last year, um, doing a, a, like an approval process via Slack where it, something happens inside the core system, but you, you engage with an approval manager, uh, wherever in whatever they're using. In this case, it's Slack and it pops up a message and they, they want to approve or deny or something right there in, in the chat app. And, um, I thought that's a, that's a compelling example because uh, I think everyone can relate to it, but I think it also uh, maybe makes sense to look at um, some of the kinds of organizations that we work with, and I think that that are more in target with with our audience in this webinar. So, uh, Ron, maybe can you um, can you talk about STB and um, who they are and and what they've done with integrations? <clears throat> Yeah, well, I think this is a, a company that most of our community knows, and there's probably people in the audience that don't know them. It's a company, uh, a long-time customer of Savoy. They are in our uh, latest uh, version of the technology stack, have a modernized uh, application. Um, they target a couple of markets. One is uh, healthcare. They are in um, organizations which sell training mm -hmm. uh, and trainers and locations and uh, also more in a, in a wholesale trading. Um, I think one of the things which they did uh, a couple of years ago, they started, um, they um, had a strategy, yeah, we need to open up our API. So uh, they had an API first strategy. I think they did that together with modernizing <clears throat> to the latest, latest uh, front end techno technology of Savoy. Um, but then they saw that um, having an API is not, is not enough. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can use their whole application almost through all through the API. The API was the beginning. <clears throat> yeah, it, 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 it was the beginning, and yeah. but then they say, yeah, but but we are the ones that need to give our customers a delightful uh, user user journey, um, and and that's not just by giving them an API, right? Uh, because it. A user journey might start in their ERP, right, and might end in Slack, right, or might start in Slack and stay in Slack. But the whole journey is is not just about the API, but you need to really think about integrations and leaving those integrations to third parties or the point solution didn't work. So they needed to also go a big step beyond that. And then what they also found out if yeah you cannot create and manage integrations one by one and achieve the required quality. It's just not possible because it takes too much time and um, and to not only build them but deploy them and keep them deployed and keep them st stable. Um, and uh, so they really see integrations as a as a strategic part of their offering. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to, to ask you about Globus because I know that um, they 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 kind of took this topic really to the next level. Uh, mm -hmm. What they did. Um, right. Can can you talk about who? who this company is and, and what they did that was kind of uh, beyond the realm of your normal set of integrations. So um, Globus is a company who is, has an offering which, they, which targets the uh, transport industry. Uh, they uh, provide a multimodal um, transport solution. So it handles every form of transport, trucks, trains, uh, tr uh, fl uh, planes, uh, ships, everything, uh, bulk containers, <clears throat> and their their um, market are the larger uh, transport companies, and and their ERP is quite extensive. And uh, what they saw is that, in especially in in in, in supply, in supply chains, the chain is very very scattered, 
extremely scattered because there are many, many people who touch uh, something when it comes from China to Europe or from Philippines to wherever, right? Many, many companies or people touch that, very scattered. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's very dynamic. It moves all the time. Um, and uh, their ERP integrates integrates also in, in their customers with many, many other systems, typically financial systems, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and so they saw two things that um, a lot of the effort to implement the software, um, and this really amazed me. Carol, the owner of the company, told me yesterday, I asked him for this, this quote, he said 50% of the budget of an implementation uh, project is integrations. 50%, yeah. can you imagine that? And, wow. and this, is, this is a standard ERP, huh? Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it causes many delays and headaches. Yeah. Um, and what I also saw, and that's maybe nice about them, they put an integration platform as a service inside their ERP because they said, we are the ones that are breaking the innovate or, or putting the brakes on the innovation. Mm -hmm. So we need to empower our customers or our, or our implementation partners, they work with implementation partners, big mm -hmm. ones. We need to empower them um, without any coding to make or to uh, maintain uh, integrations because it's such a big thing in this industry. Um, and so for them, uh, integration is, is a really, really big USP. So, so um, just to, to clarify, so they, they, they actually open up uh, integration um, platform here, so end users or um, implementation partners can customize the integration for every every implementation that they have. It's not exactly, to, uh, yeah. Build them and and uh, customize them and deploy them. Yeah, because like I said, it, it this this is a very quick changing world. So if one of the customers decides to have another freight forwarder work with them or another warehouse, whatever, then you need a new integration. Right. And you want that, you want that fast. So, um, so and I recognize that in, in the transport industry. Uh, next level approach. Yeah. Um, I know uh, Reflecta um, uh, does something somewhat similar. Um, can you talk about uh, their business though, um, who, who they are and, and what kind of ISV they are? So Reflecta is a company that is uh, focused on the fashion and fashion retail industry or whole fashion wholesale actually. Uh, uh, again, of course, this is, is uh, pretty much, uh, or a lot of this is about logistics and transport, also very, um, very scattered. Mm -hmm. uh, they focus only on this industry. And I think they have two really big types of integrations. One of the biggest, I think, for them is that they chose to stay on a uh, more legacy backend, uh, mm -hmm. build on progress, mm -hmm. and put, put a Servoy front end on top of that. Uh, that's a big integration right there. Uh, they, they, they and, chose and by that, that you, you mean that they're reusing the... Uh, the a lot of their core system. So, so like existing business logic and. Well, actually yeah. everything is still in their core system mm -hmm. uh, in legacy and uh, Servoy is more like the front end processor of this. Okay. Uh, and that's a choice because they also want to be more, um, more agile. So be able to modernize parts and keep other parts still in the legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they chose to do that as a strategy. Um, and, uh, but, but I think the other, other part of this is that Integrations for them is so essential that, um, uh, for instance, for working with on-premise hardware, stuff like that, like uh, weigh, uh, scales to, to weigh mm -hmm. stuff or forklifts or uh, doors which open up and stuff, right? And that's, and they, that's also integration right there. Um, and also, of course, they, they, their software lands in the landscape of best of breed solutions. Right. Uh, they typically don't deliver accounting systems and... HR systems and right, um, so they integrate on many many levels and many many forms. Yeah, I know. I was I was uh, talking at Servoy World last year with one of their lead developers, and um, in this effort, I know they have to do a lot of uh, mapping. Um, they map payloads from these different flows and have to kind of twist the data. Um, and sometimes that's simple, but it it can get very messy. Um, this is actually a screenshot of the configuration of of some of this, these mappings. Um, right. 
and uh, I think what's interesting about their approach, it's kind of like Clovis, where they don't they don't spend developer hours on on this. They instead use a use a integration platform as a service uh, to deliver that, and it gives them not only greater productivity but the stability and maintainability uh, of this uh, these implementations for their customers uh, is enhanced as well. Right. Yeah, I think for them, what's what's really cool about this is that, of course, they deliver integrations as part of the uh, implementation. And with the implementation, they, they typically build the first many integrations. But because that's so successful, their customers keep coming back for more. It's like, you know, you get people addicted on integrations. Um, and that, that, that goes hand in hand with great user experience, of course, right? Uh, for them, delivering a really seamless experience to their ERP users is key. And seamless means um, not being seamless just in your ERP, but also in everything outside of it. And really think more yeah, in the journey of a user. What, what, will, what will he see and what will he use and how does that feel? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, for them, this is really key. Yeah. Well, we, we talked a little bit about um, now how, how some ISVs are turning, you know, the, the changes in the marketplace and, and, and um, opportunities in the technology landscape into, into real value for, for their customers. Can you, Ron, can you kind of summarize that into a, a, few, a few points about how, um, you know, what was a recipe for that? How does that look like? Well, of course, you can look at this more from a um, defensive way, right? And, uh, oh, now I have to break up my application. And But if you turn it around, I think you can, uh, and you, if you're embracing this, you can start seeing that people are people, right? And people like to pick and choose because they want something that really, really fits well. And if they have something that fits very well, they'll, they'll like you. And... Uh, and, and you're being you're going to be more lovable, um, <laughs> uh, and I think that's that. I think that's the most important thing about about the product we all sell, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think, uh, of course, that will lead to um, less churn and less uh, attrition. Um, but I think what's behind really that is that if you're more lovable, more valuable. Uh, then um, because you fit so well on what they use, I think you can even get people to no longer talk, talk about price, right? Or I think probably most ISVs um, have discussions about price and um, that the price needs to go down because there's competition, right? But if something fits very, very well, only if somebody uses two or three modules of your complete ERP, which may have maybe 12 modules, if those three are only used, but people are really, really happy with that, I think there's no real discussion about price anymore because the value is is so connected to something somebody likes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you can turn it around by, uh, like I said, like trying to keep somebody, somebody gated in your total eco space and they feel locked in. If you open up, but make them love you, it, it, it's a completely different feeling. And I think uh, the, the market forces everybody to do this, but if you keep on breaking, right, rather than embracing, uh, I, I think the, the way to go forward is to embrace it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, and, and I think maybe last but not least is that uh, this also, of course, goes hand, goes hand in hand with, with relevance. Um, uh, it, I think that the example I gave before with the, the approval workflow via Slack or something, exactly. um, it, you, you expand your, um, you expand your relevance into the areas where they're, they're not even using your application, but uh, they're already, they're meeting you on their own tools. Uh, right. So if they're using Slack already and you engage them in Slack, then um then you know they're, they're 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 using your app even when they're not. I guess is what I want to say. And, yeah, uh, and, and, and that and way how, you're always how, there. You're always how, there. How great is that? How great is that? Yeah. Right. And uh, rather, oh, I'm so I'm feel so sad that I they don't use my internal chat application. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, um, if they're happy, they're happy. Right. And I think that's what we have to embrace all, rather than uh, seeing it as as something that comes head on. Um, yeah, but maybe uh, maybe to you then, Sean. Um, 
why do you think that I, a lot of ISVs are behind on integrations or em embracing it? Um, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's a good question. And, and uh, I work directly with, with a lot of our customers who, um, who are facing this. Um, and it's, it's yeah, connecting to services, uh, APIs, they've made things a lot easier, but uh, that's kind of the beginning. Uh, and um, there's a lot that happens. Um, uh, you, you saw the slide a few slides ago that the crazy looking mapping diagram for Reflecta is a good example. Um, you have uh, maybe you're connecting to two accounting systems and they return um, uh, data with different column names and different formats, but you need to blend it into the same thing. Um, I think anyone who's worked with a web service, maybe they're used to getting dates in a string with or without a time zone. Um, you have to make sure that that all, all maps together correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when developers build point-to-point uh, -point integrations themselves, uh, one thing to consider is that you now own that code for the lifetime of the application. Uh, so this means that if, if another version of, of the API comes out uh, or something is deprecated, um, you have to adapt to that. If there's a competitor that you want to switch to, your code is no longer relevant. Uh, and of course, just like regular software, you have to test and fix issues related to uh, integrations as well as normal software um, long after the initial implementation is done. So the, the total cost of ownership is something you have to consider. Mm -hmm. um, and, and connections are not limited just to, to regular cloud service providers. Um, there's often uh, on-premise uh, deployments. Uh, I think at the beginning of the presentation, Ron, you were talking about the pressure on ISVs to have a cloud offering, but also to satisfy uh, their customers reluctant to leave the cloud. So you need to deliver integrations to both of those environments and configure them individually. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, um, I think like uh, in the case of Reflecto, you mentioned, this can include hardware. Um, so we're now talking about uh, IoT uh, connections, which could be sending data to the cloud or to um, uh, on-premise uh, appliances and machines uh, or both. Uh, so it's not just a kind of two-way street. It's, it's much more messy than that. Right. Now, if you've ever worked with a poorly documented API, I don't need to say any more. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, build, building the code to connect to, to something is, is one thing, but, but keeping it running in production is, is quite another because uh, I think just like regular software development, we focus a lot on, on building, on implementing a feature, uh, and then once uh, we put that into production, it's a whole, whole other challenge. You got with integrations, you maybe want to track, meter your calls. Um, you, you need to see log data. You want to know if um, certain calls are failing. Can you retry failed calls? Should you retry for a while and then do something? You know, the, the, these kinds of questions, they, you, you don't start thinking of them when you're building the integration, but when you start really testing it and running it, then it, it becomes clear. Mm -hmm. And if, if you've ever built a, a, an authorization flow, um, you know that this uh, can start off easy, but then become more challenging as you go. Um, you have to deal with uh, tokens, maybe you're saving credentials and tokens, um, refreshing tokens, et cetera. Um, it's nice to not have to worry about that if you don't have to. <clears throat> um, when you're, you have to uh, think about uh, optimizing performance, um, you can only, perform as fast as, as the service that you're maybe connecting to. Um, and then maybe you have to consider things like caching. Uh, what about uh, API services that um, require throttling? Uh, how do you deal with that? Um, paging, et cetera. Uh, so it's, it, it does get uh, tricky. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, there are some um, service integrations that, that route data through their, their own cloud. Um, and this, this can create uh, issues around compliance if, if you um, need to deal with a GDPR or, or you're sending um, in North America, we have a HIPAA compliancy for healthcare patient data. Uh, you need to be mindful of what routes that data takes when it's in transit. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and, and like you said at the, at the beginning, Ron, uh, don't forget uh, about legacy systems that in and of itself can be uh, an integration uh, that you have to consider. Yeah. So, uh, what, what's they're, cool they're, about legacy, Sean? What's cool about legacy is that integration today still is sometimes about 
picking up an FTP file, a file from an FTP server and parsing it and, right? I've seen that before, yeah. Uh, well, That's I've seen it before. We, we delivered a system ourselves two weeks ago, which does that. Oh, wow. Uh, um, so, yeah, I think a legacy is here to stay, I would almost say. Um, pick, pick up and drop off integration. Yeah. <laughs> that, and I think, um, yeah, if you're an IZ trying to deliver solutions, that this is, I think, their day-to-day -day struggle. Right, right. Well, Ron, maybe maybe I should I should um, turn this around uh, back to you then, mm -hmm. um, since you've made the business case and, and I talked about the challenges. You're you're mm -hmm. the CEO of Servoy. Uh, what are we going to do about this? Well, um, well, it's, it, it was always Servoy's mission to remove the burdens of building and delivering business applications. So, and I think this this is this is for many. Uh, ISVs and also corporate developers, I think maybe sometimes even bigger, a big burden. Um, and uh, integration is becoming more and more important, I think, with these scattered landscapes, uh, mm -hmm. scattered in terms of solutions, scattered in terms of infrastructure, on-prem, so cloud. Um, it's, it's becoming more and more scattered, it seems. Uh, and we know why. We talked about why. So um, therefore, we decided to pursue a partnership with, with two companies. Um, and um, um, so, yeah, one, so we, 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 we talk about integration and orchestrating. One of the partners is uh, CData. We did a webinar with them, I think, somewhere in March. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they deliver really, really nice integrations with many uh, ERPs, financial systems, but even things which uh, are like, like Stripe and Many integrations, e-commerce, e uh, and and then technology platforms too, like um, AWS. And it, it, with this integration, the integration makes it so simple and so feels so native to Servoy that it's it's really really valuable. I think, and I think mm -hmm. the whole audience and everybody in the Servoy community needs to hear about this. Mm -hmm. So next week um, we're going to do a webinar just with C Data, mm -hmm. our new partner, where we'll also talk about pricing and and Sean will do a great demo. I we're working on uh, yeah. on, a, on a we're working on a case uh, with actual with uh, one or two customers. I saw one of our customers is in the audience, so uh, that's good. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, like I said, because it feels so so native to Servoy, and it's mm -hmm. I could build this. I think well maybe. Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so that that's one, and I think the other one um, uh, is an integration platform as a service. Um, a partnership we have with Connect Plaza. Uh, so both these we OEM, uh, we sell them at a really nice pricing level through Servoy. Mm -hmm. uh, what this IPAS is, is more about orchestrating uh, connections. Um, it's, a, it's a no code environment um, uh, in which you can do the data mapping, create these connectors, uh, deploy them in cloud or on-prem. Uh, what's really nice about this is that this technology can be used, for instance, for to talk to on-prem hardware, like a scale. Mm -hmm. um, and what's also nice is that this uh, platform helps you to monitor and, um, and analyze what's happening. Uh, again, um, it feels very natural for us to work with a company like this. It, it fits very well to what we do, really trying to unburden people developing these complex solutions. Cool. Um, okay. Well, um, I want to I want to thank everyone um, for uh, their attention to this webinar, and I hope that um, that what you have seen is compelling, and you'll join us in the coming weeks uh, for the, the follow up webinars. And I'd like to also thank you, Ron, for participating. Uh, again, this is recorded, so if you need to rewatch any of this, we will be posting this later today and, and sharing the links to that. Um, thanks, everyone, and we'll see you uh, next Wednesday at, at the exact same time, and we'll be sending out reminders for that. Thank you for joining.